Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Greetings, paladins, shamans, and death knights. Today, we're taking a look at Small World of Warcraft, the World of Warcraft version of Small World. Now, this is not an expansion for Small World. It is its own standalone, like I said, using the World of Warcraft theme. If you are familiar with the original Small World, you'll be right at home here as most of the basic rules are intact. You will be choosing a race along with a special power at the start of the game, and those will be randomly assorted so different races can be matched up with different powers. And once you have taken yours, possibly having to pay a fee if they're further down the line, you will be allowed to place the units of that race into various spots on the board or boards as the case may be, as the board will be made up of multiple islands. And you need to have at least two of your units to enter a space, possibly more. For instance, at the start, you'll need to be coming in from a port, as they are islands, you'll be entering from the sea, and you need one additional unit to get into that port space. So you're going to need three at the beginning to place into a new territory. From there, you can expand outward, uh, placing more units into adjacent spaces, uh, but again, you will need extra units if there is an enemy there or if there is a mountain region. And there are other things to keep track of on the board, different regions that might give you different bonuses or perhaps special locations and artifact tokens that you can discover and may give you different benefits. Then at the end of your turn, you will receive victory coins. You're trying to get the most of those in order to win. You get one coin for each region that you occupy, plus extra coins depending on what your bonuses might be for your specific race or your specific power. Maybe you wanna occupy certain types of regions, for example. Eventually, you're going to have spread your units a little bit thin. It's gonna be harder to get them into stronger areas and have them grouped together. You're gonna to want your race to go into decline. Uh, that allows you to now take a new race and a new power from the lineup, and your old one will still get you some coins as long as it remains on the map, but they will be a lot weaker and you won't have access to their power any longer. Now, there are some mechanics that make it stand out from the base game of Small World. Obviously, you have races that exist in the world of Azeroth and are designed to fit whatever that race does, be the Forsaken or coming back from the dead or the orcs just really don't like the Alliance. You've also got some different mechanics that are from expansions. You have some artifacts and legendary places that are similar to mechanics found in the small world underground. But there are some other differences. First off, as stated earlier, you're fighting on islands, not one main continent. Now, depending on the number of players, that will decide how many islands and how big they are. But another big feature is the Horde and Alliance. If you know anything about the Warcraft world, one of the biggest functions in it is there's pretty much an eternal war between the Alliance and the Horde. So, in this game, most of the factions either fall in the Alliance or Horde. There are a few neutral factions. If a Horde faction defeats a race of the Alliance faction, they get a coin. So if a Orc, for example, ignoring their own ability, is able to defeat a human, a Night Elf, and a Dwarf, they get three coins, one for each different race they defeated. The same is true the other way around. So if a human defeats a Tauren, an Orc, and a Troll, they'd get three coins. Now, neutral races do not count because they're, well, neutral. They play both sides. So you'll see some of the Pandara and some other races that I think as of this recording are not playable, like the Naga, as races you can pick. Now, besides that, as we said, everything else is pretty much small world. You'll be choosing races and either getting coins, hiding them, and seeing who can get the most at the end of the rounds for that player count. This is a game that certainly needed to exist at some point just for that title alone, right? I mean, that's, I think we agree that is the genesis of this game. <laughs> that is maybe like 80% of why it exists. And even if the game just weren't even good at all, I would be like, yeah, but you know what? They had, they got that pun. They made that work. We don't thought, know who, but we know someone either at Blizzard or at Days of Wonder sometimes said, man, small world of Warcraft. I really want that to happen. And eventually they convinced some of the higher-ups to talk to the other company and it 
came through, and God bless them. They I did want to the know right who. thing. <laughs> I want to know who. You Come deserve forwards. your props. <laughs> Come forward and claim, <laughs> admit what you did, and uh, take take ownership of it. We'll, we'll reward you for it. But anyway, yes. That said, uh, <laughs> this does use the Small World mechanics, and Small World is a very popular game, I think, for good reason. It's one of those, cl- I would say, entry-level games. You know, it's nothing too crazy or complicated, and that works pretty well here, you know, taking a property. The mechanics are pretty solid. It's still fun to play around, and it's not the kind of game where you need to, you know, spend a very long time learning how the mechanics work. You can be like, all right, this is how the game works. I'm going to just place my Night Elves there. That said, I, and I did actually play this with someone who is very deep into World of Warcraft still. It's not, don't expect to feel like you're playing as your character there. You know, this is this is just look. I'm I'm, I'm putting some orcs around, and yeah, they the, they don't like humans and all that. But it's not the deep immersive world, which is not the worst thing in the world. It's just don't be expecting it. It is interesting because the original Small World was already in this very you know kind of relatively generic high fantasy tropes. You're like you know humans, elves, that kind of thing. And World of Warcraft has its own flair in those areas, but it's still pretty much, I think, treads in the same territory. So it doesn't feel like this is, in some ways, I mean, I guess that makes it perfect because it's like a natural fit for it. In other ways, it doesn't feel very different, especially as, you know, someone who's not that uh, well-versed in Warcraft. No, that's it's like, right. I what are these things? They're you're just, still going like... to be happy. You're like, look, it's elves, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, so yeah, I guess. It doesn't feel like, uh, why, why is this look a little weird or something. I mean, I was saying it more as, yeah. But then I think on the other end of that, it, it's also like, well, it would be kind of cool if they did feel a little more different, if there was something more unique about it. Uh, they do, of course, again, all have their own, you know, all the races have their own new kinds of powers and stuff. And there's new abilities that are, some of them are really powerful. Some of them are cool. Uh, they let you sometimes like spend coins to, to, to do, to make certain decisions. Uh, and and again, they all have the horde and alliance thing. So that that's really another is, wrinkle yeah, to it. The big kicker, I think, and it's very that adds a very interesting choice because uh, you can have a match where only alliance characters begin, so everyone starts with an alliance. But then a horde character appears in the uh, possible lineup, so it's like if I decline first and get that horde, everyone's already going to be pretty weak, and I can just start getting those extra coins in. But then if they go after me later, so it's a very interesting back and forth that I like a lot. I do think it's something that it depends on what comes out because there definitely, I think, could be right. some games where... It depends where... which combinations too, you know, whatever that other power is can right. really affect how that race works. But I, th- I think there's some games where like it might not even really come into play that much at all. And some games, it might be a huge factor that you're constantly looking at each other for what side you're on. Uh, like it's it's a it's a small, it's a layer on top of it that... Uh, isn't very complicated, and I think that's that's the best thing you can say about it. But again, it's, it, it just makes me think, like, you know, World of Warcraft didn't invent the idea of two teams fighting <laughs> each other. Like, this this is a cool idea. Like, it could have been in any small world expansion, the idea of two factions. You know, the fact that it's Horde or Alliance, it doesn't really feel different in, in any real way. Like, it's, it's not like I really feel like I'm an Alliance player now, <laughs> which maybe you don't in well, Warcraft that, really that either. is part of it, too. Well, in Warcraft, you know, if I chose to play a Tauren, you know, I'm Horde. That's it. You know, you don't switch. In this, you know, I could be Tauren woman, I'm like, eh, decline. Oh, those those Worgen are looking really nice, you know. So it's not <laughs> as, you're not attached as much. But That's I want to talk about the neutral characters because I also like that they're an option. Because then you could be like, I don't feel safe choosing one side or the other. Maybe there's a strong alliance and Horde out right now. So I can choose neutral and not really give them too many points. And that also becomes even more important in the alternate game mode they have. Uh, You can actually, depending on player counts, uh, have a pretty much one team is only alliance races, one team's only horde, and if you have an odd number, someone plays neutral. And what happens there is you pretty much play the similar idea, but you're trying to make sure whoever has the lowest score on your team, that's the team score. So if Jonathan and me were both alliance, and he had a score of 50, but I only had a score of 40. 40 is what our team score is. So it becomes this interesting team dynamic of how do I make sure we keep a, either a really close score, or even if I'm the lowest one, you know, I still am pretty high. And meanwhile, that neutral player can just play both sides because they yeah. are, there's only ever one neutral player. They don't have a team, so to speak. So that's another really fun dynamic to add that, like you said, isn't also making things too complicated. 
Yeah, I think it's a it's a simple idea, you know, needing, needing to prop up your teammate, but it works and it's it's an, it's nice to have another different way to play Small World since probably a lot of people at the, by the time they're picking this up, uh, probably there are a lot of new people to it because of the Warcraft, but I would imagine a lot of others have played a lot of Small World in the past, so it's nice to have something in there to shake things up a little bit. Crits and misses for Small World of Warcraft. Crits. The Horde Alliance mechanic is one more interesting thing you need to consider when choosing a race, and with the all-new team mode, it will really come into play in a big way. It's a small change, but it adds a lot when you're deciding either your first race or a race after you've declined. If you see the board set up for one side or the other, it's worth paying those extra coins to be able to wipe out the enemy side. The board is split up into multiple islands, so you'll have more decision in how and where you decide to enter the board initially, and it will also change the way you interact with other players depending on where they decide to go. The way the islands are set up for player count make it the perfect size for whatever you need. It's never too small that you never feel like there's enough space or islands for you to go to, nor does it feel ever too big that you never interact with other players. Misses. What factions appear depend on what races come up. So even though we enjoy the Horde versus Alliance mechanic, there is a chance at games that you only see Alliance and neutral players, meaning that mechanic never comes up. It's a mechanic I really enjoyed, but especially with smaller player counts, uh, it's one that I wish that they had emphasized more. Don't buy this game expecting you'll be deeply immersed in the world of Azeroth and leveling up a character just like World of Warcraft. It's got that flair painted over it, but in the end, it really is just small world. It's a nice treat if you're a fan of the series to see different races and characters depicted on the artwork, but if you're looking for the ultimate World of Warcraft board game experience, this isn't exactly it. I'd love to see a game that really tries to go nitty gritty, maybe a, a dungeon crawler similar to Descent. Uh, that in the world of Warcraft that is, you actually feel like you're loving a character, but I think this is a fine start. I mean, honestly, for the pun alone, I think this is worth it. And it's not that Small World is a bad game, so having those mechanics, it's still fun. And it is fun to see, like, oh, now the Forsaken are out or something. But it is, you know, we're the kind of guys who always love that theme, so knowing how much, uh, especially since it's been around for so long, World of Warcraft... Uh, all the different, war like, l the lore behind it and some of the famous characters that aren't going to really be big players in this game is a little sad, but it's still fun to play. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I'm not someone who's super into Warcraft, uh, nor am I someone who's super into Small World. So I think if you fall into at least one, preferably both of those camps, you'll be really, really happy with this. Um, you know, I like Small World. It's it's fine here and there. It's not one that I'm, like, itching to go back to all the time. But for it is what it is. Like, if do you like Small World? Do you like World of Warcraft? I mean, it's worth noting that if it wasn't obvious from what we said before... All the races do have their own unique powers and everything. It's not just a reskin. So you will get a brand new experience and it is totally standalone. So that, that's something worth noting. They didn't, it's not a, I don't think this is just like a lazy cash grab or anything like that. They, uh, they, they went for it as far as they could, I think, within the constraints of the small world system. Uh, and that is what it is. And I, how much you like small world. Or, or World of Warcraft, I think, will determine precisely how much you'll enjoy this game. You know what? Don't take our word for it. We're going to give you the chance to get your very own copy of Small World of Warcraft for the next couple weeks following this review. So if you missed this after the fact, you can just skip the rest of this video. <laughs> uh, we are giving away... One copy of Small World of Warcraft, brand new, sealed. You can go to rollforcrit.com slash contest to enter. There's multiple ways to enter. One lucky winner within the United States will be receiving a copy of the game. Uh, and you can tell us what you think uh, of it. If you've already played it, of course, you can let us know in the comments. You know, are you do you play Horde or Alliance? Uh, are you a big Small World fan? Do you like the changes? they introduced here or do you think there's things in this game they should now bring into original small world that could be something worth exploring you can of course always let us know in those comments down below and don't forget to tell your friends especially if they enjoy small world or world of warcraft to check this video out or don't tell them because you want to have a better <laughs> chance of winning right <laughs> keep it to yourself <laughs> i don't know i guess i shouldn't say that thanks for watching guys till next time i'm jonathan i'm will and this was roll for crit we would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. If you choose to support us, turn to page 25.